So robotics is all over the news. Robots, self-driving cars, things in our home. But the question is, is this the kind of job you would want? And what are the job scopes for careers of robotics here in America? So this video, we're going to break this down and see if this is a career path that's right for you. Check it out. Hey friends, welcome to Chine Coaching. I'm Rob, and at Chine Coaching, we love helping people think about their plans, their future, their jobs, especially in these cross-cultural contexts like coming to work in America. And robotics is a very interesting industry. Um, a lot of buzz in the news, big companies, cool things happening. But is it the right thing for you? Do you have the right skills? Is it going to have the salaries that you're interested in? Is there a future for these things in America? Our friend Simon, who's got an incredible background and worked at multiple companies with robotics and automation, is going to share from his experience to guide you guys about this. And stay tuned to the very end as well, because we have a really cool resource for you to go deeper into robotics careers. Simon, welcome, buddy. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, Rob. Uh, always great to be here chatting with you. My robotics career began right after grad school. I worked for a couple of small businesses in a Atlanta, where we made uh, industrial robots, you know, that went into those big robotic arms that went into like the packaging industry and manufacturing industry and things like that. Since then, moved to Tesla, worked on the beautiful Model S and X powertrain systems, and then moved to Lyft, which is the second largest rideshare network in the US, one of the early members in their uh, self driving team. After that, moved to Neuro, uh, where we made beautiful delivery robots. And then since then, I've moved to Aurora. So, uh, huge uh, streak of like robotic self-driving companies uh, hitting different industries. Been an exciting journey so far. Definitely. Yeah, it's fun just even seeing your LinkedIn profile and hearing your stories and seeing you ride these, you know, self-driven trucks across Texas. So really cool stuff. I know your background in education with undergrad and master's is electrical engineering, electronics. But our very first question is to what extent does someone need to master the mechanical, electrical, and programming part to working proficiently in robotics. Let me make a counter comment to that. One of the misconceptions in my opinion about the robotics industry is like, what do you need to specialize in? A lot of people like mm. ask me, what do I need to do to get into the robotics industry, right? That's basically like asking, what do I need to study to get into the military? The military has jobs for people of pretty much any skill set. If you are an accountant, you can still get to the military. If you are, you know, like a mechanical engineer, you can still get there. If you're a software engineer, you can still get there. Uh, any uh, sort of discipline you can still get. The same is true for robotics. But robotics companies are companies, they are businesses. So they need like business people. In many cases, they need marketing and sales people. In many cases, they need like accountants. On the other end, they build products that are heavily technical in nature, which are hardware and software in majority of the cases. So software engineering, data science, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, a combination of those mechatronics and niche specializations of all of these it's all of these fields beautifully coming together to make a product and make it economically or, or like make it make business sense, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That's what makes a robotics company successful. So think of it as a as an industry rather than a specific job that you need to go to school for. Now, I'm saying this, but even then, each of the areas that you're in, be it business or technology, whatever kind of engineering, there are certain things you could be doing though to prepare yourself in your specific field for the robotics industry. That is true. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's a place for just about anyone in this industry, but what should an incoming robotics student maybe focus on, especially so they can be job ready? I would say be doing a lot of projects. I think uh, no matter which field you are in, like let's say you're a software engineer or let's say you're an electrical engineer, the types of projects you do help you get head start in respective types of industry. For example, if a software engineer does a lot of data science projects or like pure software kind of projects, then and they have a good idea or maybe a good thing to feature on their resume to get into those fields or maybe to pivot to data science or something like that. For a robotics, you know, if you want to get into the robotics area, I would say grab some open source tools and let's say you're a software engineer. Try to do some soft core software work that's relevant to a robot and try to see how you can integrate it such that it controls a piece of hardware successfully, right? Like you can start anywhere from an Arduino and go up the food chain there. If you are in like an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer, look at projects that you can do that specifically relate to robotics 
the electrical components of robotics or the mechanical aspects of robotics and then team up with a, a super interesting software engineering buddy and build a robot on your mm-hmm. own. I honestly would say, and I think a lot of professors would beat me up for this, but I learned more out there in the world doing stuff than in any classroom in my life. So spend less time in classrooms. I don't think it's worth it spending time in classrooms. Yeah, I say practice makes perfect. So the more projects you can do, the more hands-on things you can do, competitions, you know, that's where the good stuff is. And that's the the proof that shows that you know what you're doing that recruiters really look for. And thinking about jobs, Simon, what are some of these booming career opportunities in robotics right now? Instead of fishing, let me tell how to fish, right? Like, so you look at the economy in general, look at where the leverage points are. Transportation is a huge leverage point, right? Like there's massive value in transportation. And that's why there's like billions and billions of dollars being invested in the whole self-driving industry because it eventually makes the roads more safer and it helps uh, introduce a new economics into the system and makes things more cost effective and things like that, right? So self-driving vehicles, there's a lot of companies now. Uh, Back when I started in self-driving, there were like a handful of them. There are a lot of opportunities now, a lot of uh, investment in that space. But if you also pivot and look at like, let's say manufacturing, I think manufacturing is another place which will be hugely impacted by robotics. It already is, but then the more advanced level of robotics, completely robotic factories, things like that, that is where the change is also coming. And then you look at more household kind of, or like consumer kind of uh, applications, right? Like those humanoid robots that work in homes and stuff like that. I would say those are relatively, you know, general use case and they probably will take a longer time. And there are not that many companies that go after go, that are going after that problem yet. But then as time progresses, we'll see companies sort of evolve to that idea. I know Tesla is already starting their humanoid robot, but there are other companies as well. Mm, very cool. Yeah, I would love to see some pictures and prototypes of some of those things. Mm-hmm. But Simon, do you have any tools and favorite resources that you would recommend for people to learn things like robotics hardware and software the right way if you are if it's like the very 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 first time you are touching anything related to robotics i'd say start slow right like i mean start start something start with something that's very basic right probably like an arduino uh, uh, there are kits that they use to teach like robotics uh, to people in schools uh, get those and then try to understand like what a PID control is to control a motor and things like that. So that's like the very basic side. And then there are uh, plenty of open source tools like OpenCV for computer vision. And uh, you, know, uh, you can literally spend uh, an afternoon Googling all this, you'll get like a ton of open source resources, which are free essentially. So just jump right in into those resources, try to build something. Just try to come up with like a product use case saying, hey, okay, I'm just gonna build a robot that will trace a line or something like that. And then go build it. Add another use case to it. Hey, can I work on an arm on this robot so it'll trace a line, stop where I want, pick something up. And then, you know, you get this full product ideas that you've built on and then suddenly you're building something and getting excited about it. And then, you know, the language people are talking in the industry, in the robotics industry. And then that's how, you know, you get yourself up to speed by doing stuff. Definitely. Before we cover a couple more topics, my friends, if you're loving this video, gaining a lot of insight and learning a lot, give a big like and thumbs up to this video to say thanks to Simon for hanging out sharing about robotics. And our chat question for you guys is what robotics company do you want to work for? There's so many. I mean, Simon's already worked for several here in America. Which robotics company would you be super excited to work for? Tell us in the comments. We'd love to see what you guys are thinking, what you're aiming for. But Simon, how can someone stay updated and relevant in a very fast paced, multidisciplinary field that changes a lot like robotics? The things that I learned in robotics like a couple of years ago are already probably obsolete, right? Like wow, there's, that's there's, crazy. <laughs> the change is going on um, there. I mean, a simple example is how good we are getting at compute, right? Like you look at the computational power that uh, uh, that companies are pro- producing out there and even that is not enough. That's why companies are producing stuff in-house like Tesla and Apple, they're producing their own chips 
other companies are unable to keep up with their demand and uh, they have certain unique niche cases right so there's not a dull moment in this industry overall watching the news follow uh, google alerts on anything that says robotics on the internet you'll get a delivery in your inbox you know just keep watching what's happening out there in the industry and then just put yourself in that position like if i were the ceo of this company or if i were a leader of a certain team in this company what would i do different it's basically like a thought experiment right like what would i do different and why would that be so uh, and then go test that hypothesis out talk to a bunch of people saying hey wouldn't it be good this way just reading stuff and learning stuff makes it like a one way street but you thinking about hey was that a good decision or could it have been done this way that really stimulates a lot of creativity in you and there are second order or third order benefits to this because when you get thrown a certain problem you'll have already thought about it in a certain way and then you'll have more perspective to add to that conversation than reading or just consuming news definitely yeah and even attending conferences industry events being a part of certain professional societies those are also great ways to network learn meet people and see presentations of what's on the cutting edge exactly yeah all right simon so you've got something an idea in the pipeline about robotics how to help other people out go ahead and tell us about this cool resource yeah one of the uh, most underestimated fields in my opinion is robotics and uh, eventually robotics is the culmination of uh, most of it in a certain industry right so my goal is to create a you know a, a resource in the form of a program could be a course a program basically that will help you take whatever you learned all the uh, you know the field that you are in right do the right things for the uh, you know to make you ready for the robotics industry or self driving industry whatever it is and then take the right action to get into that industry this is a, a resource a course that i'm i'm creating the in partnership with a lot of industry experts because i'm an electrical and electronics uh, engineer i've over time gained good understanding of software engineering and all those fields for me to make sense of a conversation that people might be having but i am like rallying experts in the industry that are working in the robotics industry already in their respective fields be it software engineering data science whatever and then building these course very bespoke and specific to hey if you are a data scientist these are the things that you can do to get into robotics if you are an electrical engineer those are the things a large amount of my effort is going into this these days uh, and uh, yeah stay tuned for that uh, i think uh, i think this will be a really exciting resource uh, that will help a lot of people you know actively for sure and we're going to have a link in the video description and comments if you guys want to sign up and be in the loop about future things launching with this robotics course from Simon it'll kind of put you guys in the the waiting room uh, for this thing to be developed later this year so go ahead and sign up that way you'll be in touch and Simon will know that you're someone who's really interested in robotics and he can help mentor and guide you in your own robotics careers my friends, we've also made another amazing video with Simon about green cards. Um, he's got a smart green card course to help people get a green card and a pathway towards citizenship. Simon has great resources and talks about the EB1 Einstein visa green card path here in America. So don't miss that video if you also want to learn more about green cards and long-term work opportunities in America. So Simon, thanks so much. This has been fun. I love learning about robotics. I love just the tangibility, the hands-on, the fun, the cutting edge stuff that you guys are doing. And I hope more people really pursue these careers. Same here. Go ahead and uh, put your email down in that uh, web page and uh, give you a good discount. Definitely, definitely. And friends, be sure to connect with us online on social media as well. Instagram, LinkedIn, Simon posts a lot there as well. You can learn some great things from him. Be sure that you're subscribed to the Chine Coaching E newsletter for updates, tips, and other resources. And we always love having you guys hang out with us in Chine Coaching. You're an amazing community. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Cheers.